in and day out. Today, first day of June 2012, a lot of stuff going on, a lot of things to talk about. I wish to bring to your attention, though, something I've been thinking about. Now, I'm... Hmm, man, what's going on with the TV? I am, uh... I am absolutely under the, uh, humble opinion that... Why is this idiot doing this? Okay. You, you pull up these news stories, you get all these ads and everything, then it switches over. But, uh, I'm under the... I'm under the, uh assumption here that the reason, well one of the many reasons for the uh, Baghdad uh, invasion I believe it was a testing ground for what's to come in America. You hear me? A testing ground for what's to come in America. Mm -hmm. So I did a little research and hold on, let me move this pistol right back over here. Did a little research. Baghdad has seven million residents or people. Four hundred and thirty <clears throat> square miles. Okay. Not very big. You know you got Fallujah and surrounding places like that, but seven million people and I don't know how many of them <clears throat> now I'm not talking about the initial war that took place with the tanks outside of there and the pulling of the statue down. I'm talking about <clears throat> I'm talking about an, uh, what I would call a urban or a countryside uh, combat environment, okay? That's what I'm talking about here. I believe that they the reason they went on in the streets and have been there as long as they have, was it's been a training exercise for them, for the military, and for law enforcement, for that matter, on our shores to... Uh, to well, to prep themselves for what they're going to attempt to do here, okay? That's just my humble opinion. I've, I've thought that for a long time, but I've been doing some research on it. And again, you got about 7 million people in Baghdad. you got about 430 square miles. And then on the other hand, the total area of the United States is 9,600,000 square kilometers, which is 3,800,000 square miles. Well, about 320 million, maybe a little less than that, a little more than that in people. Okay. Thing you got to understand also about America is uh, Baghdad in and of itself and the surrounding places of it, not very mountainous, not very uh, much water, not very many trees, not many places to hide out, not many places to survive. Because, I mean, you can spot a, a camel 70 miles away out there. But that being said, they did they did urban they did urban warfare and uh, how to do reconnaissance and how to how to break doors down and go into families' homes and all that for years and years and years. They've trained and trained and trained and trained and trained. And uh, as that was going on, and the Patriot Act one and two and all that good stuff that Bush did, and now the stuff that the Kenyan tent maker has done in terms of passing executive orders and laws and all that, it gives them the ability to, like I told y'all before, to trample on a constitution that is no good to start with, okay? I mean, it used to be, but not anymore. So how, how, how could this play out? How could it play out if, in fact, martial law, uh, were to come about this year, how would it how would it play out? They have, how many troops do they have? What two hundred thousand uh, for Iraq? Yeah, about two hundred thousand, I think it was. And uh, you see, uh, a lot of that is logistics. A lot of that is uh, uh, what I would say the background boys and gals that uh, you know were on the setting up the. Uh, uh, camps and the bases and guarding the perimeters, the camps and the bases, and then you had the uh, then you had the recon, and then you have all of those uh, teams that would go in, and they would pick out a certain area. And I, I'm former military; I understand how it works. They would pick out a certain area, they would go over it and over it and over it with a with a you know with a map in in the uh, 
at the base and they would practice and practice and practice and by computer nowadays they could computer generate what they were going to do before they ever did it. Now that being said, uh, they are still not successful in what they attempted to do over there. Okay, now uh, you notice how the mainstream media, and I'll never get to my news today because I'm not going to get through with this rant obviously, but notice how the, uh, the mainstream media, the news is not, they're not pounding whether it be MSNBC, the, the liberal leftist, or the right-wing uh, bought-out uh, conservatives of Fox News, they're not pounding Iraq. You very, very seldom do you hear anything about Iraq anymore in terms of what's going on. Okay. Now, as they would go in, and they would go in and, and perform their missions, see, you never, you very rarely heard about the casualties of the military uh, or the occupiers, uh, which was the United States military, you, you very rarely do you ever hear about any casualties or exactly what took place there because you see the fact of the business is just like Afghanistan, uh, they were some successes by the Iraqi people. It's just that that was never promoted, okay? Now, and most of the Iraqi people, sure, some of them had some shoulder-fired rockets made out of uh, two-and-a-half-inch pipes. Some of them had the real deal that they had uh, gotten from Syria and different places. And, uh, and, and, and mind you, I'm not, talking about, I'm not talking about a military military conflict, okay, over there, okay? Because, uh, you know, they, they dropped the bomb, shock and all, and did all their stuff, you see. And uh, I'm not talking about, um, um, you know, the stealth bombers dropping stuff I'm, and taking out uh, the electrical plants and, and, and things of that nature. I'm not talking about the air defense systems being taken out. I'm talking about an urban combat situation. This is after the fact of the initial war. Then I'm talking about the land and the urban invasion by whether it be SEAL teams or whether it be mercenaries or whatever, or, you know, you know, private contractors or whatever, they, they in and of themselves had to use Iraq, Baghdad, for a training ground in order to implement what they want to supposedly try to implement upon us in the not-so-distant future. Okay? Now, what we have to think about is the amount of, uh, the amount of square miles that, that you had with uh, 150,000 people, uh, well equipped and well armed by taxpayer money, uh, no doubt, but uh, and, and and some of the best equipment and, and technology that that money can buy. But then at the same time, they always had their setbacks and they always had their casualties because I got to tell you something. You see, when it comes to when it comes, just like the Iraqi people, okay, when it comes to defending themselves, uh, they'll use any means necessary. In other words, uh, everything's fair in love and war, okay. Uh, you know, when you see some people dressed up in, in military uniforms and toting M4s and, you know, and maybe a barrette on their side and, you know, and you got a sniper on the roof over here and over there popping people and popping cameramen, it's gonna, it's enough to piss anybody off, okay? Whether you're an Iraqi or not, okay? But that being said, they, the Iraqi people are, they're very resilient people because number one, they love, they love their family. They're dedicated to their family, although although they're nuts when it comes to treating the women like they do. Okay. Now that being said, they are very dedicated to their family, and they are dedicated to their God, Allah. He is not my uh, creator, but at the same time, you get you know you got to give them credit that they are very dedicated uh, to Allah. Okay. Now uh, that brings me to a point over here in America that I wish to tell you uh, that well, it's fact. See, number one, uh, there will be no success, and I'm not talking about saving America here. Now, don't you remember? I'm just, I wanted to establish and tell you about the mileage and, you know, the square mileage of it, uh, 3,800,000 square miles of America, and a lot of that is, on, is, is very sparsely populated, okay? And so that, that being said, America has a lot of streams, a lot of mountains, uh, a lot of rivers, you know, a lot of, a lot of territory that is, uh, how should I say, the everyday, uh, the everyday soldier probably does not climb up and down mountains all their life and they do not know the, the ins and outs of what goes on, uh, with the, the country hicks, just like they could not understand the ins and outs and 
the resiliency of the Iraqis, uh, or the Afghanis for that matter. Now, that being established, uh, see, fighting Baghdad in an urban uh, warfare was about like fighting uh, Chicago or L.A. That, that was what was going on for years. And, and, you know, you had Fallujah in different places. But at the same time, you see, it's going to be a piece of cake in martial law for the, uh, for the, if they wanted to take over Chicago, it would be a piece of cake because number one, they've outlawed weapons. If they wanted to take over California, it's going to be a piece of cake because they, you could tote a weapon, but you can't have a, a, a magazine with it. So that's pretty much a piece of cake. But places like Texas, Wyoming, North Dakota, South Dakota, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina. You know, it's not going to be real easy in terms of implementing martial law and what I would say gaining full control. And I'm just trying to give you some hope here uh, based on, and I, I like to analyze things. Okay, and based on what I've analyzed, it ain't going to be near as easy for them to take the state of Montana in the way they took Baghdad. They'll have to use different, they'll, what they'll have to do, what they'll have to do when they come to just, just uh, rape a state, they, they're going to have to do a lot of air bombing in order to take it over because they, they're, not too, they're, they're not stupid enough to put 150,000 troops, whether they be foreign or domestic, in one state. Uh, because uh, that's putting all your all your putting all your cards on the table when you don't have a royal flush. Okay. So what I believe they'll do is I believe they'll uh, use the shock and awe tactic on certain states as uh, as what I would say. Uh, well, let me put it to you like this: example states. What? So you know they'll drum up something, make up something. And then there'll be a few bombs dropped um, in certain states. It, it, this is after martial laws ensued, and there's a bucking that goes on. But you got to ask yourself: uh, Is that what it will take to wake up people? I'm not talking about the government of America surviving or anything like that. That's over with because the Creator is going to deal with that. But, but is that what it's going to take to wake up some of these people, these sheeple that 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 think that you know that think the stock market's going to come back, that think that uh, Unemployment is 8.1 percent when it's actually 25 to 30 percent. Did they think that we spent five to seven trillion when 22 trillion is the actual number? I mean, I'm talking about those type of folks. Is that what it's going to take to wake them up? That 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 uh, you know, uh, maybe 30,000 people die from uh, from their own nation being bombed by their own uh, government. Is that what it's going to take to wake people up? I don't know. It may be. But you see, the thing about it is, uh, it's time to wake up. If it was ever time to wake up, it's now. And, I, and I've often said it's probably too late for a lot of people. I'm not here to judge people, but based on their actions and what they do and don't do, you see, uh, brings me to the point that they don't care anymore. You see, and here's the thing about it is, uh, you ready for this? Think about it when it comes down and all the tourists, whatever time of the year it is, because whether it's summer or winter, there are millions of tourists that come out, fly over from Europe and different places to America and come from Canada and up from Mexico and everywhere else to come. Uh, some come for winter skiing and, and, and winter fun. Some come for summer fun. But so you're talking about, you're talking about uh, a lot of people here, a lot of people here. You see, and uh, how, much, how, much, how much did it cost them just to hang on to Baghdad? In terms of logistics, see, logistics is a nightmare. Logistics is a flipping nightmare. And, you know, I've heard about the on the Canadian border up here, submachine guns and all that good stuff and everything else. I've heard about the foreign troops. I've actually personally never seen a foreign troop uh, in America. Personally, I have never seen them. That don't mean they don't exist. I'm not doubting the existence of them. Okay. But what I am saying to you is, is uh, from prior military experience, logistics was always our nightmare. Okay, a weekend training mission, the guys had to start. The guys had to start at the beginning of the week for a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday training mission. 
the beginning of the week now, and that's just for that's just for a a platoon uh, of people to get things and get them.